David Brewster here with a new episode of Three for All, and this is the 200th episode special. And before I say or do anything else, the first thing I want to do here is thank everyone out there, the viewers and channel supporters, especially over on Patreon. Patreon supporters are keeping the lights on here, literally. But I want to thank everybody because it's almost been five years since I started this channel. And when I originally started, I had no clue or idea what I was doing. And I still don't really have much of a clue or an idea what I'm doing. But something's happening, and that really makes me happy and excited, especially when I see comments from viewers, and they're excited and inspired, and maybe I've turned them on to a new band or guitarist or something, or some new ideas on the fretboard. That's what this channel's all about, so thank you. I'm also proud to report that this channel's received over 97,300 subscribers, and we're so close to that glorious number 100,000. Um, I can smell it, literally. So thank you once again for all the support here. So the Late Night Lessons channel anniversary, or birthday, is January 26th, and that's also Eddie Van Halen's birthday, which is cool. And, you know, the channel actually started January 26th of 2019, and then the first episode of Three for All was posted January 27th, so the next day. And that video, Trio of Diminished Licks, it was actually clips that I had posted on Facebook, and then I edited them together to make a video. I don't even appear or talk in that video, I don't think. But uh, the first video where I kind of used the, the current format, where I had a guitarist and the image of their guitar, you know, for the cover image, and a bootleg that I kind of edited and chopped up, and we're looking at licks. The first episode that was like that was Warren Martini, three Warren Martini licks from 1987. That was posted April 8th of 2019. And then the most recent episode of Three for All was three Ray Gomez licks from 1977. And a couple days after I posted that video, I actually got a friend request from Ray on Facebook. So that means he watched it. And I was so excited. I was like, Ray's friending me on Facebook? No way. But anyway, that's kind of the origin of the series. So I did create an episode like this for the 100th episode, and that was almost three years ago. I looked it up. And in that episode, I was actually sharing some of my licks because I had viewers out there asking, like, let's hear some of your licks. And I thought about doing that again for this episode, but then I thought, you know what, this is the 200th episode. We've looked at a lot of different players, a lot of different licks, a lot of different styles of music. And I thought, instead of just showing some more licks, I want to supply you with something very important that you should remember and always, you know, come back to when you're learning somebody's licks. And you could do this with chords and riffs and stuff, too. But since we're talking about licks, and that's kind of what Three for All is all about, we're going to target something that came originally from John Sykes, and I'm a huge John Sykes fan, and I featured him twice on the channel, you know, in Three for All episodes, also chord play episodes for White Snake and Thin Lizzy and Blue Murder as well. But anyway, here's the two images if you're looking for John Sykes Three for Alls that I've already created. So the premise behind this entire episode is going to focus on making variations, and making variations of a lick or an idea or a theme, and this is extremely common. You can find this in classical and rock and metal and jazz and country and tons of styles of music. And we're going to pinpoint and target something very specific for Mr. John Sykes back when he was working with White Snake. And it's not really even a lick, even though Three for All is technically about licks, this is technically part of a riff, but then I've kind of reworked it and made it into a lick or a phrase. And I definitely remember working on this back when I was a teenager, and I was working on Still of the Night, and I just kind of tapped into this on my own. I didn't have anybody direct me to try it. I just started doing it, you know, on my own for some reason. And then later I realized, like, wow, that actually opened a lot of doors for me. So to get started here, we're going to basically drift and play around with F-sharp minor blues. So think of this. <laughs> flat five. So that's where we're going to start, right there. And then as far as the lick or the motif itself, it's basically like this. Really basic. And you can play it as fast as you want, um, but I would recommend maybe start slow. We're just going to kind of walk through you know, these ideas. 
but start there and pick every note. And you can see we're starting on that B and then grabbing the flat five, that C note, and then coming down like this. And I would also recommend fretting it just like that. Use your third finger and your pinky. You know, don't shy away from using that pinky and do that like this. Do it four times in a row. sharp right there. Now the first variation, now we're going to play that, but we're going to use legato. So I want you to slur notes way more, pick way less, like this. Right? And there you can see I'm actually relying on my fret hand more. Of pull outs right there. Do it slow. And the next variation. Now try slides. And do it slow. variation here now try picking so we're gonna grab that B note bend that up a half step to grab that C and then we're gonna play with that picked or bent note like this and make sure you're only going up a half step there So right there you can see we had one idea and then we made three variations of it and they gave us a total of four different ways to play that same lick. We picked everything, we slurred everything, we slid everything, and then we bent everything. So let's take that and then move it down an octave. And this is definitely going to put us in the same register or octave that John Sykes used for Still the Night, which is where this idea came from. But then if you take what we just did and move it down an octave, we're going to start right here and we're also going to be using open strings, but we're going to do this. And you can see right there we're doing the exact same lick, but then just reformed an octave lower right there. And you can slur everything. Variated, made three variations, then we moved everything down an octave and made additional variations right there. Let's do the exact same thing but go in the opposite direction. So instead of going down an octave, let's go up an octave and see what happens when we move it up there. So we had this. So let's move up an octave and let's put it right here. So play that and pick everything. Slur everything. Slide everything. And then bend everything. So I'm sure you can see what we're doing. We just took one idea and started making some performance variations as far as how it was picked or played, then moved it down an octave, moved it up an octave, and then we can continue doing this. But this type, uh, type of variance, you know, with licks and ideas that you learn on the guitar, is very important because you're not only learning the original lick, you're learning how to kind of rework it and turn it into something else. Now, as you begin creating variations, start thinking outside the box. Like, start thinking of some very different ways you could play that original idea. We had this. Moved it down here. Moved it up here. So think of some different ways we could play that. Let's actually end that last E note right there. Instead of fretting it, let's just play the high E open and we can hybrid pick like this. And we're going to end with a high E open instead of that E right there. Do it like this. Do it again up here. Do it right there. And we're just basically, you know, instead of doing this, and fretting that E, we're playing that high E open right there. Thank <laughs> you.
experimenting and trying some different ways of playing it and hybrid picking and using open strings like that's really cool what about a tapped variation we could actually incorporate a tap slide and kind of give it a makeover and rework it like this and the exact same phrase but tap like that you can see we're also using the high e open again at the end um, but instead of like a hybrid picked phrase like we had before now it's part of that tapping phrase like that. So it's kind of weird to end that tapping lick with an open string, but there it is. We could uh, rework it up here and do it like this. And there we're shift sliding that F sharp back to the E at the end like that. And that's tricky. We'll do it again way up here, just like we did on the B string. So really all we're doing is just finding a completely different way of playing that or that or and we did it like that. Alright, the last conceptual variation I'm going to add here is let's expand this beyond just, you know, being performed on two strings, you know, because the original idea was right here. Motif, but it's only using you know five different notes right there and it exists on two strings so let's expand it to three strings and this is going to change you know the way it's kind of fretted and performed it's actually going to make it a little bit more difficult and kind of awkward to play but we're doing this you know on purpose like we're specifically you know checking this out just to see like hey what's it feel like or sound like or look like instead of playing like this what happens if we do this E note on the G string right there. And it actually makes it harder to play compared to this. So now we got that third string to kind of reach over and grab. And we can take that idea and let's rework it up here, and we could do uh, we could do it like this a three string you know grouping like that i'm also starting with the middle finger right there and that e note's over there on the d string it's really tricky right there we could do it again like way up here um, and we could grab that that E note hiding over on the A string. So as you can see, you may not actually end up wanting to play it that way. You might think, man, that's kind of awkward or it feels funky. Or, you know, it depends on what you're doing or where your, you know, fingers and where your solos or your ideas are taking you because you might be, you know, traveling along and maybe that's the way you want to play that phrase if you decided to use it somewhere. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Three for All with the 200th episode special. And definitely, you know, I thought about it when I was putting this together and I was tempted to just share, you know, more licks. And I thought about sharing more, of, you know, some of my licks or maybe some of my favorites. But then I just kept thinking about this and I thought, no, you know, I did that once before, you know, in the 100th episode. And I thought, no, let's let's hit something different. And this is really important and eye-opening if you haven't really had somebody explain this or demonstrate it or kind of direct you to try this because it seems like there's a whole population of players out there that are so nervous and scared about making mistakes that they never allow themselves to try this, to just kind of play around. And you know, they're so focused on playing it the way it was taught to them or the way it was you know, written or performed that they don't really just kind of free up, you know, some of the stress and just experiment and, and play around, you know, and just like almost like a mad scientist or something and just see what happens because you never know. You might take a lick or a phrase that you've learned from me or somebody else here on YouTube or, you know, you might go to a concert and see somebody play something and then you kind of borrow it and start making variations. But this is where original ideas, original music and concepts come from. Experimentation, making variations noticing something that somebody else did 
and then reworking it in your own way. And that's where original ideas and original music comes from. So this is really, really important. But I've noticed a lot of people just overlook it or they don't even think about trying this, but you definitely should. So anyway, with some feedback and comments, please subscribe to my lessons and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. And thank you.